As we prepare to celebrate our Mass this evening, we begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 131, Come Praise the Lord, the Almighty, the King of all nations. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together on this, the 32nd Sunday of the Church's year. We have entered, uh, having celebrated on Tuesday uh, All Saints, we've entered into this month of November, the month of the Holy Souls. We pray for all those whose names we remember in our hearts, our family, our friends, those we have known, those who have been close to us. We pray especially for those who have died over these past 12 months and all whose names are recorded in our parish uh, November list. But as we do so, we also pray particularly in this Mass uh, joyfully for the recent 80th birthday of James Gadigan, and we ask the Lord to bless him and his family and friends too. The Lord invites us to follow in his footsteps, to follow where he leads towards the resurrection, towards eternal life in God's kingdom. But as we journey, we recognize at times we trip and fall and we sin. So we ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness for all our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. There were seven brothers who were arrested with their mother. The king tried to force them to taste pig's flesh, which the law forbids, by torturing them with whips and scourges. One of them, acting as spokesman for the others, said, What are you trying to find out from us? We are prepared to die rather than break the law of our ancestors. With his last breath, the second brother exclaimed, Inhuman fiend, you may discharge us from this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up, since it is for his laws that we die, to live again forever. After him, they amused themselves with the third, who on being asked for his tongue, promptly thrust it out and boldly held out his hands with these honorable words. It was heaven that gave me these limbs. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. The king and his attendants were astounded at the young man's courage and his utter indifference to suffering. When this one was dead, they subjected the fourth to the same savage torture. When he neared his end, he cried, Ours is the better choice, to meet death at men's hands, yet relying on God's promise that we shall be raised up by him. Whereas for you, there can be no resurrection, no new life. The word of the Lord. I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. Lord, hear a cause that is just, pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer, no deceit is on my lips. I kept my feet firmly in your paths. There was no faltering in my steps. I am here and I call. You will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me. Hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in my justice I shall see your face and be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has given us his love and through his grace such inexhaustible comfort and such sure hope, comfort you and strengthen you in everything good that you do or say. Finally, brothers, pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message may spread quickly and be received with honor as it was among you. And pray that we may be preserved from the interference of bigoted and evil people. 
for faith is not given to everyone. But the Lord is faithful, and he will give you strength and guard you from the evil one. And we in the Lord have every confidence that you are doing and will go on doing all that we tell you. May the Lord turn your hearts towards the love of God and the fortitude of Christ. The word of the Lord. Can you rise? Stay awake, praying at all times, for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who say that there is no resurrection, approached Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing that if a man's married brother dies childless, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Well then, there were seven brothers. The first, having married a wife, died childless. The second, and then the third, married the widow. And the same with all seven. They died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, to which of them will she be wife since she has been married to all seven. Jesus replied, The children of this world take wives and husbands, but those who are judged worthy of a place in the other world and in the resurrection from the dead do not marry because they can no longer die, for they are the same as the angels. And being children of the resurrection, they are sons of God. And Moses himself implies that the dead rise again in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord God, the Lord God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all men are in fact alive. The Gospel of the Lord. The King of the world will raise us up to live again forever. This quote from Maccabees, from one of the brothers being uh, forced to try to break God's law, sets a tone for our Mass this evening. We have reached week 32 of Ordinary Time and begin the final three weeks of the Church's liturgical year. And with this arrival, the focus turns for the rest of the, these days to the end of earthly life and for the gift of eternal life. We have that quote from Maccabees. We have our response in the psalm that I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. I don't think the psalmist is just talking about waking up in the morning. We speak sometimes euphemistically about those who have died, who have, are asleep. The Lord is the God of the living and 
they are, in a sense, paused and will see his glory when they are awakened. Our gospel acclamation, pray for strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. That reflection on the final judgment, praying for the strength to have lived a good life so that when we meet the Lord at the end of our earthly life, it may be with confidence, recognising, yes, we need his mercy, but also that we deserve, in a sense, because of his love, acceptance to his kingdom. And so we arrive at our gospel once more. As is often the case, we have this battle going on, a battle of words nonetheless, but the Sadducees versus Jesus. It is always the opposition to Jesus who uh, makes the attack, so to speak. They place the testing question. Well, if Moses says this, how can that be true? So Moses tells that it is a fam family's responsibility to have children for, uh, to bring them into the world. And so they take this uh, holy number of seven for the Jewish people, very holy, but they use it to ridicule Jesus and also the teaching that he presents. As perhaps they go through the list, well, the first one didn't have any children and the second, and they could see the pressure perhaps, or so they hoped, building on Jesus. But he rejects their position, doesn't accept to be placed in a position where he is uh, responding uh, in defence, but speaks boldly. He tells us that eternal life is both the culmination of earthly life and its fulfilment of God's plan for us. It is, a, it is different from here and now, but not a rejection of the here and now. In the liturgy for a funeral mass, one of the prayers in the preface speaks that life is changed, not ended. We don't erase what was there before, but it becomes something different as we leave this world and journey to the Father and end to eternal life. As in a few moments, we will stand once again as we do each weekend and profess our faith. And in the Nicene Creed, which we use so often, as we get to the end, we profess that we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It is a promise from the Lord that we look forward to and accept and profess as part of our faith, part of our trust, part of our love of God. The resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. And so, in November especially, we pray for the faithful departed. We pray for the holy souls, that the loving Father may speed them to the wonders of his eternal kingdom. But at the same time, we also pray for ourselves, that God may give us the grace to live lives worthy of deserving the gift of life everlasting. And so, as we reflect on those we have known, as we reflect on our own lives, let us pray wholeheartedly that for ourselves and for the faithful departed, the King of the world will raise us up to live forever.
So let us now stand. And joining together as a community of faith with Christians throughout the world, let us profess that faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who God is not made, but consubstantial by the Father, through him all things are made. For us and men, for our salvation, he came to our heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate and virgin Mary, and to be changed man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one and only in the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I call for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to our Heavenly Father in prayer asking for his blessings on all those in need. For Pope Francis and all who are called to leadership in the church, that their work may be blessed and bear abundant fruit. Lord, in your mercy. For leaders of nations, that they will strive to see that the needs of the poor and the defenseless are provided for. Lord, in your mercy, for those who exploit the poor and rob them of their dignity, that they may turn away from sin and towards Christ. Lord, in your mercy, for the deceased members of our families and our parish, especially those who have died during the last 12 months, that they may have eternal life with God in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for ourselves and the people of our local community, that we may work for reconciliation and peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our local area. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our in a moment of silence, let us pray for our own private intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers before Mary, Queen of Heaven, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious and loving Eternal Father, Hear our prayers and grant them for the good of your children who now call upon you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist and take up our collection, we place our prayers upon the altar and also, I, in a moment, I will place our November list upon the altar too. And we pray, especially in this Mass, in thanksgiving for the 80 years of James Gadigan. And for the, those who may be watching on our recording, the 8.30 morning Mass is offered for all our parishioners and our half past ten Mass for the repose of the souls of Mary and Michael Hunter. And so we sing our next hymn, Hymn number 517.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that, celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, Paul his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If I invite you please to be seated once again, to ask you as always to pick up or download a copy of the parish newsletter uh, so that you may be aware of various things that are happening. Um, this coming uh, Monday there will be Mass, as I've uh, moved my day off this week, uh, to be up in London on Tuesday. So on Monday, which is also the dedication, or the anniversary of the dedication of the uh, St. George's Cathedral, there will be Mass here at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but however, no Mass on Tuesday, uh, so there won't be 12.30 Mass this coming Tuesday. Uh, we spoke, uh, put in the news centre last week, about the parish fair. Uh, we've now uh, confirmed with the school when they're doing theirs. We are now not clashing at all with theirs. And so uh, Saturday the 10th of December, so uh, in the morning and early afternoon, and then after the two morning Masses on the Sunday, uh, just to give another opportunity for people who may not be around. Um, I would offer it up for you this as well after the six o'clock. However, uh, A, it's dark and you want to go home, and B, the people who are manning the stalls would have been there for several hours during the day, uh, so we give them the evening off. So blame me, come and nag me and say, what about us? And then we'll remember for next year. Um, tomorrow afternoon, if you're uh, interested and available, I'll be visiting um, the cemetery at Whitstable to lead prayers at three o'clock. And then if anybody wishes to then go and bless individual graves. Uh, so there's an opportunity for a community prayers, as it were, Tomorrow, tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, at the back of the church, you may have noticed on your way in, uh, there were some uh, new envelopes for the Archbishop's appeal. Um, the Archbishop has reflected on uh, what used to be called the Archbishop's Administration Fund and has decided rather than to uh, focus on admin, he's uh, focusing on three areas of pastoral responsibility in the diocese and so you'll see those areas outlined um, was it youth and, youth and evangelization faith our faith in action and clergy care and formation so next weekend's sunday second collection will be for the archbishop's appeal and if you would like if you want more details i'm sure it's also on the news uh, on the envelope uh, if you are a taxpayer but not on the regular parish gift aid scheme and would like the diocese to get your gift aid, um, please fill in the details on the envelope as well. Um, so that will be next weekend. Uh, last thing for me to mention, because I'm sure you have probably read it all already, um, the final clear up, well, okay, of this year, uh, of the grounds is going to take place next Saturday at 12, um, Saturday the 12th, uh, between 10 uh, in the morning and 12 at noon and I will endeavour to throw everybody out at 12 o'clock so it's a definitive two hour window. Uh, if you turn up at two minutes to 12 you'll get a smile, possibly a cup of tea and then I'll send you home but um, I'll, I won't force you home but anyway uh, the idea being is that we have one final go hopefully the weather will be clement if not uh, I wouldn't imagine it'd be warm but uh, Clement would be nice, and uh, that will. And as it says there, we we were donated some uh, bulbs, which uh, we managed to 
uh, get planted very professionally by some of the youngsters of the schools. They came round on Wednesday uh, and uh, planted them in the car park, in the, the little bit of soil that's on the far, far side of the car park. So we will see in the spring how their green fingers have worked. So I invite you please to stand once more. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And as we prepare to head out once more into the dark, we sing our final hymn, hymn number 386. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, dark though it may be outside, we take the light of Christ with us to bring light to those we meet. <laughs>